my dear students colleagues and all the viewers who are watching this program live from facebook page and youtube channel i would like to welcome you all to our international physics webinar good morning all here in bangladesh and very good evening to all those who are watching this program live from usa i think you have already come to know that the department of physics patna university of science and technology has started its online program including online international physics webinar so as we know that uh, we are staying in a corona pandemic situation and situation becoming worse day by day so we cannot uh, continue our normal academic program inside the campus we have to start our online program so we are trying to adjust with this new normal situation and i think you have already uh, come to know that uh, we have successfully completed our 208th international physics forum including three nobel laureate speaker and today we would like to welcome you all to a joint session between our department department of physics of the university of science and technology and the monero valley college usa and we have with us here today dr deepen bhattacharya sir professor department of physics and astronomy monero valley college usa and he has already connected with us so i'd like to welcome our speaker sir namaskar uh, good morning okay. and good evening here there thanks for accepting our invitation sir so before going to you i would like to introduce shortly with, with you to of uh, with my student and uh, my uh, viewers so i think uh, dear student and viewers uh, you have already come to know the title of this today's international physics so it is the our universe in damaris very exciting uh, topic and i think you will enjoy it and our speaker is dr adipen bhattacharya sir professor department of physics and astronomy monero uh, monero valley uh, college usa and uh, you can see uh, he has completed uh, his uh, higher secondary school uh, education from Notre Dame College, Dhaka, Bangladesh, and then he completed his master's degree from Moscow State University in physics, and his PhD degree from uh, University of New Hampshire in astrophysics. And uh, then he joined as a research fellow at uh, NASA as a NASA Goddard Space uh, Flight Center as a researcher, uh, and he stayed there up to 1992. and then he joined uh, as a research physicist at the Inu university of california in uh, december 1992 and he stayed there up to uh, 2012 and now uh, currently he is working as a professor of the department of physics and astronomy at the monero valley college uh, so uh, in, in usa so we feel proud of him uh, as uh, his Bang bangladeshi so thanks sir for giving us this opportunity to attend such an uh, important and exciting webinar with you sir it's your time sir you can start your session sir uh thank you dr pritham dash for inviting me let me see first uh if i can um uh, share the screen here <clears throat> so again uh uh the first of all uh, can you see the screen dr dash yes 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 you can see you can yes. okay so um <clears throat> so for first that i'm really um, excited uh, actually to be here amake amontron korar jonno onek dhonnobad apni ei je seminar series korchen that's very 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 commendable definitely so Uh, basically i'm going to talk about gamma ray astronomy and how we um look at our universe through gamma rays and it's an electromagnetic part of the spectrum gamma rays are so i'll i'll briefly describe actually how what type of detectors do you need to look at the universe with gamma rays uh, and stuff like that what we have here are two photos on the left you have a <clears throat> picture of our kind of our galactic plane uh, in gamma rays actually so it's it's not an optical vision it has a chokhe dekha jay na obosshoi ar dan dike that what you have is a picture of a gamma ray satellite called compton uh, compton gamma ray observatory which was operating in 1990s 1990er doshoke ebong gamma ray jyotirbiddhay ek bishesh obodan rakhe আসলে এই টেলিস্কোপটি পৃথিবীর কক্ষপথে ছিল 
তো এটা এগুলো নিয়ে আমি সংক্ষিপ্তভাবে পরে বলবো বাট নেক্সট আই ওয়ান্ট টু শো ইউ ব্রিফলি ওয়ার আই হ্যাড বিন আই ওয়াজ এ স্টুডেন্ট অ্যাজ অফ সেন্ট গ্রেগরিজ হাই স্কুল ঢাকা আর্লি ইউ নো ইন লাইট সিক্সটিজ আর্লি সেভেন্টিজ অ্যান্ড দেন আই অ্যাকচুয়ালি আই স্টাডিড বোথ ইন নরডেম কলেজ অ্যান্ড ঢাকা কলেজ অ্যান্ড দেন আই ওয়েন্ট টু মস্কো অ্যান্ড আই ওয়াজ studying at Sternberg Astronomical Institute, which is part of Moscow State University. And I did some work in optical astronomy. Optical astronomy, I said, is that we can see the light of light in the light of light. Visible light, right? And I did some work with Seyfert galaxies. A Seyfert galaxy is a very good galaxy. It's not a galaxy, it's not a galaxy. It's not a galaxy. পঞ্চাশ গুমার একশ গুণ বেশি আলোক বিকিরণ করে কিন্তু তারপরে আমি যখন ইউনিভার্সিটি অফ নিউ হ্যাম্পশারে যাই যেখানে আমি পিএইচডি করি মাই ওয়েভ লেংথ চেঞ্জ ওয়েন আই সে মাই ওয়েভ লেংথ চেঞ্জ ইট মিনস দ্যাট আই ওয়াজ ডুইং অপটিক্যাল অ্যাস্ট্রনমি দেন আই মুভ টু ভেরি হাই এনার্জি অ্যাস্ট্রনমি উইচ মিনস এক্স রেজ অ্যান্ড ক্যামারেজ এবং পরবর্তীকালে আমার পিএইচডির পরও ওয়েন আই স্টার্টেড ওয়ার্কিং ইন নাসা ফর এ ফিউ ইয়ার্স আই অলসো ওয়ার্ক উইথ স্যাটেলাইট ডেটা অফ ক্যামারেজ অ্যাকচুয়ালি and then basically that was my career path then i joined university of california gamma ray group where i worked for a long time and we flew some telescopes i mean dakhabo pore what we did balloon balloon born telescopes i mean ek bochor even as a full bright fellow i dhaka teo i mean kaj korechi ek bochor dhaka bright university te i mean physics porechilam ei 2006 2007 sal nagat and now currently i'm in morno valley college achi and if it's a full time it's a physics and astronomy position muloto porano ri ar ki shei orthe research shebhabe hoy na so let me go over to uh, what we mean by gamma rays uh, by the way uh, uh, pritom uh, amake if you want to interrupt me at any time please do so yes sir yeah. right korbo sir ami jodi or relevant question pai obviously sir right so first of all amra keno gamma ray agree prothomoto gamma rays are the most energetic photons orthat gamma ray amra chokhe dekhte pai na kintu eta ek dhoroner alo to ekhane ami electromagnetic spectrum ta dekhachi so this is you have if you look at the top portion the radio waves is on the extreme left hand side and gamma rays are on the extreme right hand side the radio waves hocche kom shaktishali these are the least energetic of the <clears throat> of the electromagnetic spectrum gamma rays are the most energetic and in between you have everything else you have microwaves the microwave <clears throat> that we use in our microwave uh, ovens khabar gorom korte but also we use in our day to day uh, communication through your cell phones you know your mobile phones and then you have infrared jeta amader sharire utponno kore infrared and then there is a very small portion that a visible light eta ashole somogro electromagnetic spectrum je bornali ache if you take the entire electromagnetic spectrum the visible light occupies a very small portion of it and then once you cross visible light you come to the ultraviolet regime and things get very heck <laughs> more energetic actually that you don't want to get exposed to ultraviolet light too much that's bad for your skin and then comes more energetic portion of the spectrum x-rays x-rays are even more energetic right so so then gamma rays tar theke beshi just to give you an idea that when you do an x-ray of your body like a dental x-ray it goes through the tissue but it does not go through especially the low energy x-rays it doesn't go through your teeth tai na da te chobi amra turi so kimba har it doesn't go through the bones but gamma rays will actually pass through them very easily so if you take a picture of your body in gamma rays it will be all transparent there will be nothing there so also in terms of frequency uh, there is a thing called frequency of course with the electromagnetic spectrum gamma rays frequency are very high and radio frequency is very low on the other hand the wavelength gamma ray wavelengths are very low and radio wavelengths are very high so gamma ray wavelengths are so small smaller than the atomic uh, you know an atom and things like that that you can almost consider it as a particle you know it's not even a wave it's like a particle so the question is that 
how do you generate gamma rays? So, a prashang ami bolle rakhi je it's important to understand how do you generate light. Light. Eje amra der alo amra ashapashi dekchi. She alo to amra ki kore pai. It's the same mechanism. The gamma rays are generated similarly. Only the process is very energetic. So, prathomay amra oni ki jani on the left what I have is a picture of a hydrogen atom with levels. Once you give levels, it's okay to show a picture like that. If you have studied quantum mechanics, you know that we cannot show atoms like simply with orbits, right? It's amon na je shurjo hoche nucleus and planets are the electrons going around the nucleus. You know that in quantum mechanics, that model is not right. Kintu amra jokhon level er kotha bolchi, then we can show it this way. So ekhane jokhon when there is an electron transition, an electron jumps from a higher level to a lower level, it emits light. Kaji e orte electron is shonge alor ekta shom joga joga chiku palo. If you look look at this, this is the Baumer series. So, for example, if an electron uh, jumps from, uh, for example, level three to level two, it will emit a light which will have a wavelength of 625 nanometer. H alpha line. So kaji alo ibhabut ponuhte pare. Jo kono ekta electron, ekta polymer nur modhe, ekta uchu porjay theke nichu porjay ta transition hoy from a higher level to lower level. We know that you can get light. Most of the things when we talk about that, ita jo kono amra bolli, tokhon we think of this as a thermal emission. And this is important part because amra jo kono gamma rate ashbo, we'll we'll see that most of the emission is non-thermal. So it is tapio. Tapio or tapio. I mean, just the actual thing that you use to do it. So all of the That's called thermal emission. So let me just briefly see if I can show you a small video of when light is emitted using charge acceleration. But the actual atomic transition of light emit high. Then there is a way. I mean, just the actual electron. Ke, if I accelerate an electron, it will also produce light. Again, light is electromagnetic wave. I will show you. From this video, just segment of it, that when you move a charge, will you accelerate it? Not move it, accelerate it. That goti vek variya dao hai. Taakhon tar thike tori chumbo kyo bikiran hai. It emits electromagnetic wave. So let me show you just a little portion of it. In the modern, consider an electric charge. So this is an electric charge. It will be accelerated, and you will see when it accelerates. It produces this electromagnetic field, which goes away from here, which is moving at a constant speed. The electric field around it is shown. Now, imagine for a fraction of a second, it accelerates. After that, it continues its uniform motion at a higher speed. What we need to understand is the effect of this acceleration on the electric field. The interesting thing is that the information does not travel at an infinite speed. Instead, it travels at the speed of light. Similarly, the information about the sudden variation of velocity of the charge does not get conveyed to the whole electric field region. The field near it knows about it, but the field far away still has no idea that the charge has accelerated and it is still in the old state. Let's separate out these regions with the help of two circles. Since the electric field cannot break, the field between these distances must transition. This transition field is known as a kink. The kink moves or radiates outwards at the speed of light. To show the kink animation in a clear way, let's move the camera along with the charge. We can say here that the acceleration of the charge has caused an electromagnetic disturbance or electromagnetic radiation. Okay. What is the most important part of this of this video? যে যখন আমরা একটা চার্জ কে এক্সেলারেট করি তার থেকে একটা ওয়েভ বিযুক্ত হয়ে ভ্রমণ করে ইট অ্যাকচুয়ালি সেপারেটস ইটসেলফ আউট फ्रॉम द সোর্স এন্ড ক্যান মুভ টু ইনফিনিটি অ্যাকচুয়ালি সো সেই জন্য দিস ইজ কাইন্ড অফ এন ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট পয়েন্ট টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দ্যাট ওয়েন উই জেনারেট ইলেকট্রোম্যাগনেটিক ওয়েভ দ্য ওয়েভ হ্যাজ টু গেট সেপারেটেড फ्रॉम দ্য সোর্স এন্ড মুভ আউট আমরা যখন রেডিও তে মানে when we receive radio waves uh, when we receive you know signals on your cell phone or your, your television that's how it actually works the electromagnetic wave that comes to you 
gets separated from the source and arrives at your position. So this is also light. Radio waves are part of life, is, is light, we don't see it. But when you accelerate an electron, it can produce X-rays, it can produce gamma rays, it can produce ultraviolet, it can produce optical emission that we see, anything is possible. Next, I want to go to gamma rays. So if you look at transition within electrons, when it jumps from a higher to lower level, you can get like optical light, you can get infrared light. But to get to gamma ray light, there can be a transition, but it has to be a nuclear transition. We're not talking about electron jumping from a higher level to lower level. You are talking about the entire nucleus going through a transition, maybe through a beta decay, okay, or some other type of excite, excitation, and then it jumps to lower level that, because the energy of gamma rays are much higher than the energy of optical light or uh, infrared. So immediately, what I say always, when you look at the electron transition, you're talking about chemistry because entire chemistry is about electron transition, electron bonding, you know, and electron <clears throat> being taken away from ionization, everything else. But when you talk about physics, you have to talk about the nucleus itself and which is a much higher energy process. It's not chemistry anymore, it's physics right there. So again, you can have gamma rays coming out from nucleus. That's one way of looking at it. What are the other ways of producing gamma rays? Ami jokhon gamma ray bolchi, actually this process is equally applicable to other wavelengths also, to radio waves, to infrared waves, to optical light, <clears throat> to ultraviolet. If you take an electron, for example, and put it in a high, very strong magnetic field, as the electron will actually experience Lorentz force on it. We know that if you move a charged particle in a magnetic field, it will actually produce light because of because it is accelerated. Kikarone, the reason the video I showed before, anytime you accelerate a charge, it will produce some kind of light. Among, <clears throat> because the electron actually experiences force in a magnetic field, because it's moving, it will produce light. And we call this light synchrotron photons. Synchrotron photons for gamma ray astronomers is very important because it's being produced by all kinds of, you know, energetic processes in pulsars, in neutron stars, you know, near black holes. Uh, even sun produces this, this when you have solar flares, you get synchrotron photons from here, there. <clears throat> When I say synch synchrotron photon, I mean again, uh, again light, sharp origin, which is synchrotron process. Then there is a process called Bramstrahlung. What's Bramstrahlung? Jokon, when you take a particle and move it very close to a like a nucleus in this case, again the particle it can is an electron. Electron gets attracted to the nucleus, to the positive particle. It doesn't fall into the positive particle, but it gets accelerated. Again, because it gets accelerated, it produces light. In this case, gamma rays. There are two other processes I should mention. One is called inverse Compton scattering. Inverse Compton scattering key, Jokon at a high energy electron <coughs> scatters of a low energy photon. What it does is that it gives its energy, the high energy electron on the left gives this energy to the low energy photon and the photon now becomes high energy. So it can scatter off, for example, an ultraviolet photon and it makes a gamma ray photon. Notice how this happened here. The, the frequencies, the wavelength or the is long, frequency is low, and then the high energy photon has <clears throat> higher frequency, smaller wavelength. And the electron loses energy. It's a low energy electron and it goes on its own way. So that's another process. Other process is called pair production. I, this is a little bit uh, tedious actually, the, you know, but I should go through these processes first because we kind of have to understand how gamma rays arise in the universe. And the pair production happens when you have a very high energy gamma ray. It comes near a nucleus and 
what it does, it's a conservation of momentum. It, the, the gamma ray can become electron and positron. So energy can become matter e equals mc squared, Einstein's famous formula. So in this case, literally, a light becomes matter. So gamma ray is light, alo podarthe hai. Gamma ray is light, and it becomes one electron, one positron. Of course, when you combine an electron and positron, they're matter and antimatter, they will become light again or gamma rays. All right, very good. So if you don't have to remember all this stuff, but remember the processes I went through. If somebody asks you what, what are these, you have radioactivity, you have synchrotron radiation, you have Bramstrong, you have inverse Compton scattering and pair production. Those are five main processes through which gamma rays are produced. Not only gamma rays are produced, also these are non-thermal processes Radio waves, infrared, <clears throat> op optical light, ultraviolet light, anything is possible through these processes, actually. So next, I want to talk a little bit about gamma rays that are generated by our sun, generated by neutron stars, which are very far away, generated by black holes, generated by uh, galaxies, which are very far away, but they don't come to the surface of our Earth. Prithibi prishtopurjunto gamma ray pochana. Kano? This is very interesting. Our atmosphere blocks most of the electromagnetic radiation that is coming from outer space. Most of it, except for two windows. One is for radio wave. In this photo, you see the radio waves coming down to the ground on the right and visible light. Visible light also comes to the ground. Among evolution-wise, amra kano visible light is sensitive. Kano amra dekhte pai alo drishyaman alo. The karon hoche, amader biomondol allows biomondol moddho diye visible light can pass through and come to the surface. It does not allow gamma rays to come through, does not allow x-rays to come through, does not allow ultraviolet to come through. And then part of the ultraviolet, which is near the visible light, comes through. Amra Jani, you, you don't want to expose yourself to the sun for too much because that part of the ultraviolet harms your skin, right? But then radio comes through. Radio waves are basically harmless, no problem. It comes through. So, so to do gamma ray astronomy, we have to be above the Earth's atmosphere. What do we do? We build gamma ray detectors. I mean, to pori dakabo, what are the detectors that you build in gamma rays? Then you put it in a satellite and actually put it above the Earth's atmosphere. Or you actually um, put it in a balloon and put it above Earth's atmosphere. Okay, so there, there are these two uh, methods by which you can go above the atmosphere. So, mool jinishta hoche je prithibir biomondol upure amar detector ke sthapon korte hobe. Ami jodi gamma ray porjobekhon korte chai. So, I'll do, do a very quick uh, rundown that keno gamma ray detect kora khub difficult. If you are a doctor, if you are watching this, <laughs> and if you are a patient, you might have used gamma rays already. Jamon, when you go to if you do a PET scan, positron emission tomography, what they do is that they put a radioactive dye in your body, radioactivity. And then what they do is that they surround your body with gamma ray detectors. And this radioactive um, uh, element actually produces uh, two uh, gamma ray photon. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, they, it actually produces uh, it will produce gamma ray photons. It produces electrons and produce positrons. And these positrons actually then combines with the electrons to produce gamma rays. Uh, so Sheta, then you detect it and you can find out where it is coming from because this dye goes and attaches to cancer cells. So that's how this works in medical field. You do similar detectors in gamma rays. One thing is that in gamma ray astronomy, or in gamma ray detectors, you cannot focus gamma rays. You can focus optical light very easily with mirrors. Aina diye focus korte 
কিন্তু গ্যামারে আমি আয়না দিয়ে ফোকাস করতে পারবো না তার কারণ হচ্ছে গ্যামারে এত শক্তিশালী সেটা আয়না ভেদ করে চলে যাবে ভেদ করে চলে যাবে না কিছুক্ষণ পরে থামবে যদি পুরো আয়না হয় কিন্তু এটাকে আমি রিফ্লেক্ট করাতে পারবো না আয়না থেকে দেয়ার বি নো রিফ্লেকশন অফ ইট সো সো দ্যাটস হোয়াই ইউ হ্যাভ টু মেক ডিফারেন্ট টাইপস অফ ডিটেক্টরস এখানে আমি একটা বলে রাখি দ্য গ্যামারেজ আর ক্লাসিফাইড অ্যাকর্ডিং টু দেয়ার এনার্জি ইজ গিভেন ইন ইলেকট্রন ভোল্ট হোয়াটস ওয়ান ইলেকট্রন ভোল্ট If you are a student of physics, you know one electron volt is a unit of energy equal to the work done on an electron in accelerating it through a potential difference of one volt. I mean, the potential difference of one volt is just to get the body. That means that the electron will get accelerated in this potential field. If you have the energy, there will be one electron volt. It's a very small amount of energy. It's like 10 to the power, you know, minus 19 joules or so. Very, very small amount of energy. But you will see that the gamma rays are classified according to the ener- electron energy volt. Ebon, depending on this energy range, I have to use different types of detectors. If I want to do low energy gamma rays, it goes from 100 kilo electron volt to one mega electron volt. I use the scintillation crystals. I use scintillation crystals, gamma rays come in and it interacts with the crystal and produces light. visible light that I can detect with photomultiplied tube. If I go a little bit higher energy, the gamma, uh, gamma rays, it's called medium energy gamma rays, 500 kilo electron volt to 10 mega electron volt, I have to use a thing called Compton detectors. What is the Compton detector? Here, an incoming gamma ray comes in. It scatters off with some detector material in the first layer, then comes and gets absorbed in the second layer. By knowing the energy in the first layer and energy in the second layer, and also the direction, I can figure out where the original gamma ray is coming from. These are called Compton detectors. I don't want to go fully detail in detail into it. I have worked with Compton detectors for many, 20 years or so, but that was one of the regime we were looking at from 500 kilo electron volt to 10 mega electron volt. And then you have a, a little bit high energy gamma rays is from 100 mega electron volt to 100 giga electron volt. GeV means billion actually, billion. So 100 billion electron volts. I'm going to show you a small uh, video. Here, how do you detect things? Gamma rays come in and they produce electron and positron pairs. By following these electron and positrons, I can figure out where the original gamma ray is coming from. And this is a video done by the Fermi group. Uh, it's a Fermi named after the, the, you know, the famous um, American-Italian scientist Enrico Fermi. And it's still operating in Earth's orbit and looking at gamma rays coming out from the universe, uh, different types of things, gamma ray bursts, gamma rays coming from pulsars, all sorts of things. So, and it's a very interesting video. I don't know, maybe a couple of minutes. So let's look at this. Oh, it's only a minute. The Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope is a powerful space observatory that opens a wide window on the universe. Gamma rays are the highest energy form of light, and the gamma ray sky is spectacularly different from the one we perceive with our own eyes. With a huge leap in all key capabilities, Fermi is enabling scientists to observe some of the universe's most powerful phenomena, including supermassive black holes, pulsars, and gamma ray bursts, which briefly outshine whole galaxies. Fermi has two instruments for observing gamma rays. Its Large Area Telescope, or LAT, maps gamma rays over the entire sky every three hours and is Fermi's main detector. The other instrument is called the Gamma Ray Burst Monitor, or GBM. It looks for spectacular flashes of gamma rays from, among other things, the birth of black holes far across the universe. Okay, so, and, and then there's another type of um, gamma ray detectors. If I go even very high energy gamma rays, this pair production, the one I just showed you, it doesn't work also. So this very high energy gamma rays, it goes from 100 billion electron volt to 100 tera electron volt. And here you use the entire atmosphere of the earth as your detector <laughs> because the energy is so high 
None of this works. So you have to use the entire atmosphere as your detector. What happens is that the gamma ray comes in and interacts with molecules in the upper atmosphere about 10 kilometer high. And then these it creates particles. A lot of electrons and positrons are created. These electrons and positrons travel faster than speed of light within the atmosphere. And they produce Cherenkov light. What is why Cherenkov light? Because the electrons in, in that atmosphere, actually the light travels slower than these relativistic electrons, these fast moving electrons. And they will produce blue light for a very small amount of time. And you use giant mirrors to capture the blue light. And then you analyze it and figure out what would be the original energy and the position of these gamma rays coming from outer space, okay? So here are a couple of things. Uh, I just wanted to show you what we did in terms of gamma rays. We worked in medium energy gamma rays, <clears throat> which is, you know, uh, where you use Compton effect. And this is our telescope. And this is one of our experiments flown from Australia. And what you do is that early morning, you go there, you know, basically you start to, they tell you that when you can fly and you wait for a month or something, because if you get a light, right flight date, and then <clears throat> in the early morning at 7 a.m., actually they put helium in these balloons and you put your detector under, underneath. And this goes up very high in the atmosphere, you know, about 40 kilometers high. So basically you are above the atmosphere and the gamma rays are not absorbed in there. And then you basically observe it for a couple of days and it, that detector then comes down in a parachute and you actually collect the detector and data of course is transmitted already. So that's in a little bit low energy gamma rays. But if you want to go a little bit high energy gamma rays, this is the air shower experiment, the Cherenkov experiment we talked about. So this is the experiment I worked for a little bit. This is, um, out in Sandia National Lab in New Mexico. So what we did is that we used solar, um, this particular uh, experiment was actually not designed for astronomy. It was designed to use solar power to generate electricity. So what they had, they had the mirrors. See, this is the hundreds of mirrors and the sunlight will come down and then it will get reflected to a tower and then you have water in the tower, water will boil, will make steam and will produce electricity. But for astronomy, what we did, we were there in nighttime, that when you have this Cherenkov light coming from upper atmosphere, you actually collect them in these mirrors and then folk actually send them to these photomultiplier tubes, actually send them to a secondary mirror and then they will come down to photomultiplier tubes and photomultiplier tubes detect visible light and you can figure out where the original gamma ray coming coming from. Very, very time consuming and difficult procedure. It's not like optical astronomy where you look through a telescope, get your data, you know, you get, you know, trillions and trillions of photons and you no know, problem, not nothing like that. Here, every photon is important. You may collect only 20 photons coming from that pulsar or from black hole or whatever, whatever it is. So now let's talk about what are the sources, what are the gamma rays out there in the universe. So here is, I'm showing you a photo of a crab nebula pulsar. So what you have is you have a, um, you have this visible light, look at the visible light. It's this <clears throat> on the top right. This is a nebula, this is a star which exploded about a thousand years ago and Chinese astronomers actually observed it and they wrote it down in their chronicles. And since then, so it's a supernova, which was even visible during daylight time. Over the last thousand years, all the gas that, that were exploded from the star expanded. And now you can, it's, it's really a very large body, actually, um, you know, kind of uh, much larger than our solar system, of course. And what it does is that it gets powered by the pulsar, which means that there's a neutron star, very dense star, which has a size only of 10 kilometer radius, 
right? Which is really nothing. You can take the city of Dhaka is much more than 10 kilometer radius, but the density of the star very high and it is rotating very fast. You know, every 33 millisecond, it's rotating once, right? So it, it is rotating 30 times a second and it is powering up this nebula. It means that all the light that is producing gets absorbed by the nebula, by the gas and re-radiated. When you look at in radio, it looks like that. Look at the infrared, it looks like that. Ultraviolet, X-rays, and then gamma rays. Look at this in when you see in gamma rays. The gamma rays don't have that resolution as visible light. The reason for it is that it's very difficult to focus gamma rays. That's why Shejunator resolution, optical resolution is not as good as the visible light or even X-rays, okay? What you notice in the X-rays, there is a, actually a disc and then you have like from the pulsar poles, dui merute, neutron star dui merute ke alo ber hoche. So when you combine all this stuff, you get the total picture of all the physics procedures happening within that star, all the physics stuff that's happening within this star. So that's why you want to observe in every wavelength. And that's how the gamma ray gives you this extra information because the most energetic stuff is happening in the gamma rays. Okay, so, so this is what we call a multi-wavelength image of Crab Nebula Pulsar. If you look at it to the right, what you have is that you have the spinning neutron star and it has this magnetic field. And this magnetic field, when you have electrons being accelerated by the spin and things like that, it produces gamma rays through synchrotron emission mostly, right? Synchrotron emission. Some of this, some of the comes also through inverse Compton emission also. So anyway, let me go forward. I want to show you one of the most intriguing stuff that is happening in gamma ray astronomy. It's called gamma ray bursts. Gamma ray bursts, gamma ray bishporon, uh, some of you have heard of it. So it has an interesting story. Let me tell you about the story. In 1960s, uh, the Cold War was still going on uh, between uh, Soviet Union and United States. Thanda Lorai Juddho. Ebong, they had a nuclear treaty. Tadhe modhe ekhi paromonik chukti hoyeche je ke kotho jo kotho ta paromonik boma test korbe bishporon ghata be jar jeno ekta khodiyan thake. But the problem is that nobody trusted the uh, you know in, you know the other side. So, for example, the United States thought, oh, Soviet Union might be exploding nuclear devices that we'll not be aware of. Amra jan mona tara hoy to ei atomo mabishpon korte, kintu jana rupai ni. Amra jani je when you explode a nuclear device, an atomo ma when you you know an atomic bomb, there are a lot of gamma rays come out of it because it's a radioactive thing. A lot of gamma rays come out of it. So what US did is that they build number of satellites. It's called Vela satellite. And they put them in Earth's orbit. to look at Soviet Union, atomic bomb, whether they're exploding atomic bomb. These Vela satellites were spy satellites. But what happened is that these satellites kept on finding one explosion per day. And when they calculated the direction of these uh, explosions, they found out it's not coming from the Earth but it's coming from outer space. And they kept seeing it, they kept seeing it, and they, in the, they knew that it was not atomic explosions on the ground, but it's something cosmic, something happening from outer space. And, and the then in 1973 or so, they declassified it. That means that scientists who are working on it, they could write papers on it. They are finding gamma ray bursts. And then 1973, when we were students in 1980s, the 1990s, when we were working, we still couldn't figure out what are these gamma ray bursts and where they're coming from. So then this satellite called um, Compton Gamma Ray Observatory were put in orbit in early 1990s. Among Tara Deklo, the gamma rays are coming from all around us. There's no specific direction. It's coming from everywhere because beforehand we were thinking, oh, they, they might be coming from our galaxy 
or they might be coming from outside our galaxy, but there was no definite proof which one is the right thing. And then it turns out that it's coming from everywhere. That means it is coming from outside our galaxy. So then eventually they, the astronomers found out that some of the gamma ray bursts, it took long time, you know, 50 years, that some of the gamma ray bursts are coincident with supernova explosion. So Tadir theory hoche, theory when it comes to the end of its life, a big star comes to the end of its life, it's going to implode first, then explode. Because what they have at the very center of this big star is a, a <clears throat> strong uh, iron nucleus. And it, it, the star cannot produce any more energy. And so the entire star collapses on this nucleus and makes this, squeezes this nucleus. It becomes either a neutron star or a black hole and the star explodes. So what they theorize is that when the star collapses inside, it becomes a black hole. And, and this there's an accretion disk around the black hole. It produces two very highly energetic gamma ray jets on both sides. And we're seeing part of these jets. It only lasts for a second or so, maybe, right? But we see that, and during that time, these gamma ray bursts are the most energetic events of the universe. It outshines all the luminosity of, if you take all the stars of our visible universe, its energy is as much as that. Not only of one galaxy, take all the galaxies that much, but only for a very short time. So let me show you this uh, animation here. So what you have is star. Okay, this is star is collapsing, but you don't see the collapse from outside, it's collapsing inside, and it inside becomes a black hole. Okay, and then the black hole from this black hole these energetic particles and gamma rays, everything is coming out in, in, in jets. There are jets on two sides because of we need kind of symmetry. And if you are looking at this jet with your gamma ray detector, you are seeing this gamma ray burst, right? So, and this jet here is, is material, is interacting with interstellar medium, and the medium becomes hot and produces light in its own way. And when the jet, now you, if it looks directly at you, then you see these gamma rays. And what this, this thing, you just remember the gamma ray you can't see with your eyes. So you see electronically, and that basically, that's, that's the spot that the de detector says that, oh, you have seen a gamma ray coming from right there, gamma ray burst. So gamma ray bursts are the brightest and most energetic electromagnetic events known to occur in the universe. It's still a mystery. We know more or less what produces gamma ray bursts. And I will show you one more thing later. It's related to gravitational waves. Uh, in, there was a big event that happened in 2017. So let's look at this one. And we call this multi-medium astronomy. Multi-wavelength astronomy. Multi-wavelength karan hoche bibino wavelength. I mean observe kurchi. I'm observing it at in radio, infrared, visible light, and so on and so forth. So that's why I call it multi-wavelength. But these are all electromagnetic spectrum, electromagnetism, right? So the force involved here is electric and magnetic force. But then when we say multi-medium astronomy, suddenly it's not only electromagnetism, we're talking about gravity. You know that gravity is a different type of force. So when two black holes in a binary system go around each other and collide, they can produce gravitational waves. What are gravitational waves? These are waves that happen in the fabric of space-time. But we can still detect it. And they are now detecting it with the LIGO, these gravitational waves coming from very distant uh, galaxies. These galaxies are billions of you know, light years away, billions of light years away. But when there are these black holes are colliding, they produce gravitational waves, we're detecting it. If one of them happens in our galaxy, 
এই দিস ইজ নট মেবি নট এ বিগ গুড থিং অ্যাকচুয়ালি এন্ড গ্যামা রেপার্স যদি আমাদের গ্যালাক্সি হয় দ্যাটস অলসো নট এ গুড থিং বাট ইজ হ্যাপনিং আউট দেয়ার উইচ ইজ ফাইন ফর আস ইন সাম সেন্স নাও হোয়াট হ্যাপেন ইজ দ্যাট ফর দিস পার্টিকুলার গ্র্যাভিটেশনাল ওয়েভ দে ডিটেক্টেড নট অনলি ইন গ্র্যাভিটেশনাল ওয়েভ বাট দে অলসো ডিটেক্টেড ইন গ্যামারেজ এ গ্যামারে বার্স্ট হ্যাপেন্ড এন্ড that tells us that that this wave detection was really real er age oneke sondoh korchilo je ashole gravitational wave detection ta eto intricate because the 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 wave actually is so small is smaller than a proton size how could you even detect it but now we have evidence that we have a simultaneous detection of a gamma ray burst during the same time and then it was seen in optical light also okay so Here is an animation done by uh, Science Magazine. So let me show you that. LIGO's hits just keep on coming. After its first detection of merging black holes, swiftly followed by finding three more and then a Nobel Prize, the pair of gravitational wave detectors has made yet another huge discovery. On August 17, 2017, the observatory detected gravitational waves from two neutron stars spiraling together and merging. Just two seconds later, a so-called gamma ray burst was detected by NASA's orbiting Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope and its Swift Space Telescope. 12 hours after the wave was detected, a team from Las Campanas Observatory in Chile reported a new glowing optical source in galaxy NGC 4993 that was consistent with these findings. And with the advanced tip from LIGO, both radio and X-ray emissions were found a few days later, coming from the same neighborhood. Not only is this the first time LIGO has detected gravitational waves from a neutron star collision, it's also the first time that electromagnetic observations from conventional telescopes accompany the gravitational waves. At wavelengths ranging from ultra-short gamma rays to very long radio waves, the event was seen by observatories around the world. Because we now have visual information to go along with the gravitational waves, new discoveries are being made about the nature of neutron stars. The light coming from the collision showed spectral traces of lanthanides, a group of heavier elements towards the bottom of the periodic table. This strongly suggests that merging neutron stars have been responsible for the creation of heavy elements such as gold and platinum, a long-held theory. Not only that, but the shape of the gamma ray burst was unusually weak. Gamma ray bursts are usually so strong that researchers assume that the gamma rays emerge from two back-to-back -back jets that shoot out of an explosion like narrow spotlights. The weaker gamma ray burst suggests it was produced when broader jets slammed into a cocoon of matter surrounding the merged neutron stars. While this finding is home to a lot of firsts, it won't be the last. Researchers are positive that with the large amount of gamma ray events out there and the increase in both gravitational and electromagnetic detector sensitivity, we'll be seeing a lot more of these combination events in the future. Okay. Uh, before we move on, I have only one more slide to show. Uh, let me sh tell you that how important this particular observation is. If you ask me, what is the what are the tremendous uh, you know discoveries of modern astronomy this is 2017 event is one of them why because these are two neutron stars colliding producing gravitational waves not only that it produces radio waves x-rays and uh, gamma rays but also infrared waves and the infrared waves showed that there are elements being produced in there. What are the elements? They showed platinum and gold. Amra amadir prithibite joto podartho ache. Other than hydrogen and helium in some sense, everything else was made in some stars which existed before the sun. Shurjer age je shomosto tara chilo. Shegulo theke ei jinish potro beriyeche. Mane those stars made, these are big stars, they made carbon, they made oxygen, they made, uh, you know, nitrogen, iron, Kintu, this particular observation showed us that when, when the neutron stars collide, they can make these heavier elements. In this case, there's platinum and 
গোল্ড বাট অলসো দিস লান্থানাইট সিরিজ যেটা পিরিয়ডিক টেবিলের অনেক নিচে আছে সো দিস ওয়াজ রিয়েলি এ বিগ ডিসকভারি ইফ ইউ আস্ক মি আমার জন্য পার্সোনালি আই ওয়াজ কনভিন্স দ্যাট দ্য গ্রাভিটেশনাল ওয়েব ডিটেকশন আর ট্রু বিকজ অফ দিস পার্টিকুলার ডিস ইউ নো ডিসকভারি বিকজ ইউ সি দিস ইন অপটিক্যাল ওয়েভস অ্যান্ড গ্যামারেজ সো দের ইজ নো ডাউট অ্যাবাউট ইট এনি মোর সো this is this will be my last slide but this is a very interesting slide and i want you to kind of understand what what I, what is being said here it says the universe in multi wavelength in maniki when i look at the entire universe let's not talk about um, you know particular stars in our galaxy beyond it ami ki dekhte pai this is the spectrum i look at it what is the spectrum on the x axis what i have is frequency in hertz a zero jekhane eta hocche radio frequency 10 to the power zero is like you know one this is 10 to the power 500000 this is in uh, sorry this is in gigahertz so you know 10 to the power 5 in this case is on the order of 10 to the power 14 hertz chokhe jeta amra dekhte pari je to for then you go further up in x rays and gamma rays in higher frequency যে আমরা যে মহাবিশ্ব দেখি সেখান থেকে আমরা আলো পাই একটা ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড আলো এই যে আলোগুলো বিভিন্ন উপায়ে সৃষ্টি হয় ডিফারেন্ট প্রসেসেস এবং এই প্রসেসগুলো যদি আমরা জানি তাহলে আমাদের জ্ঞান মোটামুটিভাবে সম্পূর্ণ হয় ওকে সো আমি ডান দিক থেকে আই ক্যান অফ ওয়ান্ট টু ঠেল ইউ হোয়াট হোয়াট দিস ইজ ডান দিক থেকে না মেবি আই উইল শো ইউ ফার্স্ট দ্য সিএমবি দিস কল কসমিক মাইক্রো ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড so when the big bang happened we think that the cosmic microwave backgrounds are the relic radiation relic mane hocche obosishto bikiron orthat ami jodi ekta patre ami whatever it is jol gorom kori ba whatever it is and then the ami pat mane agun nibhiye di tale jol ta aste aste thanda hote thake kintu e patro ta still tar gorom heat wave bikiran korte thake so this cosmic micro background is like that so i mean jodi mahabishwa dekhi if i look at the universe the cosmic micro background even though the each individual photon has a very low energy it's in micro a very low energy but overall total energy dominates that's cosmic micro background if i look at the far radio wave eigulo hocche durer galaxy radio emission je jodi ami combine kori that's how much i see in radio acha ami ebar dan dike jai on the right hand side i see gamma ray background this gamma ray background is mostly this is uh, this is accelerated by galaxies actually eta hocche je there are galaxies which are very very energetic active galactic nucleus quasars tader moddhe there are synchrotron emission happening inverse compton ha- happening jeta ami age bolechi that's why important so those galaxies contribute this gamma rays and and ek kichu ta x rays and then the x rays jeta ashe jeta muloto onek galaxy there are cluster of galaxies and there is a hot gas between the galaxies and they produce thermal emission what is thermal emission thermal emission which is just transition of atomic states which is atomic electron orbit sheta theke and then comes optical amra jeta chokhe dekhi eta hocche ge kichu ta thermal emission hocche je tara tarader je rater akashe amra we see the night sky the stars also it also comes from this active galactic nucleus je khub energetic galaxy nucleus e je black hole ache shekhan theke o ashe and then there is a far infrared fir it means the infrared seta ki kore eta hocche je dhula ba onno kichu jokhon এই সমস্ত অপটিক্যাল ওয়ার ইজ অপটিক্যাল ইনফ্রোয়েড এমিশন অ্যাবজর্ভ করে রিএমিট করে ইন লোয়ার ওয়েব লেন্থ দ্যাট উই সি ফর ইনফ্রোয়েড সো হোয়াট আই এম ট্রাইং টু সে হিয়ার হোয়েন ইউ টু লুক অ্যাট অল দ্য ইলেকট্রোম্যাগনেটিক ওয়েভস অ্যান্ড ফিগার আউট হোয়াটস দ্য মেকানিজম দ্যাট প্রডিউসেস দিস ইলেকট্রোম্যাগনেটিক ওয়েভস ইন দ্য প্যাক সো দ্যাটস দ্যাটস হোয়াট মেকস ইউর নলেজ ফুল সো উইন অ্যান্ড দ্যাট গোজ ফ্রম এভরি discipline of science or arts or whatever it is that you kind of look at the entire thing and say i understand this i understand that i understand that and that's what makes the universe so that's why when you talk about astronomy you have to talk about the, all the wavelengths i'm going to stop sharing now because amar tharna this kind of uh, you know we want to talk a little bit uh, without the slides 
and that might help us a little bit. All right, so that's the gist of it. Ami jani na ita kodo khani mane thik moto present kora gaye kina. But what I wanted to actually emphasize here is that when looking at the entire electromagnetic spectrum, you observe the universe and you figure out the processes that produces this light behind it. I think that this is good. This is this is better. So Kaji, Ami Judi now Bushte Pari, a ki thorn a jinish gulo, a gulo produce korche. Uh, but as long as I know that these are the things there, you have synchrotron emission, you have inverse Compton emission, you have thermal emission, which is electron transition, right? You have some radioactive emission. Radioactive means that the transition of nucleus itself. Um, then you have also Bram Strahlung. Kaji, uh, combination, we are seeing this light coming to us. Even when we're sitting here, you are looking at me, the emission that comes on, on me and, and then goes out. It's mostly thermal, actually. Kintu ami jokon high energy te jabo, it is non-thermal. So that's the difference right there. So I can take some uh, questions and then elaborate on it a little bit. Okay, sir. Thank you. Anik dhunnabad, sir. Asha dharun ekta lecture amna shunnam. So we have got two questions in inbox. So then we can start our yeah. discussion session. Mm -hmm. The first question, uh, could gamma rays uh, at the lower energies also help us to identify neutrino sources and thus cosmic resources? Acha, it's a good question. Let me just tell you a couple of things. There are no specific neutrinos. Okay. Yeah. There are no specific neutrino sources. Need one of the ways in, in astronomy, first of all, there is, a, of course, there's a neutrino background. And then the neutrinos that come out of stars. Is there a yes, microphone on us? Yes, yes. So what was there is that, for example, within the sun, you have a constant a nucleosynthesis happening. And this nucleosynthesis actor product is a neutrino. Amra take a neutrino, we are detecting it all the time. So that's a neutrino source. It you know we don't need to have to depend on gamma rays. Supernova explosion. Johani supernova explodes, it produces neutrinos. There is a supernova exploded in large Magellanic cloud in 1987. It a gamma ray astronomer did you know event chilo. When the supernova produces lots of uh, nickel and cobalt, and they actually decay in some ways. You know, this is in this chain with iron. Among Sheta, actually, Amar at a slide chilo at Arupure, but when it does it, it produces this gamma ray emission. To, if you can detect that gamma ray emission, then you are sure that this nucleosynthesis is happening. You're producing this iron, nickel, and nickel and cobalt. So, so the point here is that. The neutrino sources specifically, there are the, there are neutrino sources, AGN, active galactic nucleus, they produce neutrinos. There have been in one event which has been seen from coming from an active galaxy. But every single active gamma ray source can be a neutrino source. The problem with that is that it's very difficult to detect neutrinos, even harder than detecting high energy gamma rays, even worse event. So that's one thing. Cosmic resources, that's a very, even I was actually interested in cosmic resources and we actually made a, a supernova remnants can be cosmic resources. Amade galaxy, the Kikore supernova remnant distribution assets, Sheta, we worked a little bit on that. So, so from that model, Amra Monikori J, cosmic resource, such a supernova remnant, J, supernova explosion, or poor J, Obishish Chanto Thaki Sheta, Ottawa Pulsar. Neutrinos and uh, neutron stars. Among Tarakta model Kore, we look at the cosmic ray distribution in the galaxy. And gamma ray are the secondary product of cosmic rays. So this this question is, is good because Amra Jokon galaxy ke gamma ray the, uh, map kori. We also know these maps the cosmic rays as a proxy. And also maps the sources as a proxy, which can be supernova remnants or pulsars. 
Thank you, sir. Now we have another question. Uh, so, could the common origin of the high energy astronomical gamma rays, neutrinos, and cosmic ray position, uh, sorry, po position give us the insight about the ultra relativistic universe? Well, sure. That that's I, this is related to the last question. The ultra relativistic universe is the universe where it produces very high energy particles. Karan hoche jokhon ami high energy um, uh, photon pi gamma ray that man hoche je je for a photon ta je srishti koreche that itself is relativistic. It has to be ultra relativistic. We really don't know how you can generate this ultra relativistic uh, electrons or, or protons even, because there are, you know, Fermi acceleration, there are mo different models actually uh, in effect, but to get to very high energy, you, are, you have problems. Secondly, we are also finding ultra relativistic particles that comes and slams in the upper atmosphere produces particles. These particles come down to the surface of the earth. We detect them and uh, they're possibly coming from, we don't know where they're coming from actually. Uh, the problem is that if they they can't come from very far, on a durer galaxy, it gets absorbed by cosmic microwave background. So it has to be nearby. So this is also an ongoing thing in astronomy in the ultra, so that's a good question. That's the ultra relativistic uh, universe um, where, where, first of all, where these high energy cosmic rays coming from and how could even generate such high energies? Is there a limit? You have zero energy limit on the left. On the right, you can go on forever. So, so the question is, um, I mean, other than speed of light, of course, that, that's your barrier, speed of light. But how do you generate this very highly... Uh, energetic events it's still it's still ongoing problem in astronomy right. yes, sir. thank you sir we have another question uh, so do gamma ray uh, burst gives us the evidence about the planck scale fluctuation in space time and strong well you, know, you are reading up on it <laughs> let me put yes. it this way uh, there are uh, as far as I know, because you know I'm, I'm not a um, string theorist or not, uh, so basically the idea is this: that his question, what it means is that if space, for example, let's say that space is discrete, okay, it's not continuous or whatever it is, and as the gamma rays come in, it has different energies, right? They have a low energy gamma ray, high energy gamma ray. Ebong tadir arrival time. I know a gamma ray burst. And I, I got the photons from the gamma ray burst. From that, I can figure out that this, the, how the space is behaving in some ways. So that was his question. That that in in but it would, so far, it is not. Unfortunately, it would have been great actually if they came in different times. Turns out they are coming in the same time. So there is no nothing extraordinary with the space so far we know it's still classical space it's not discrete or anything like that and actually speaking it was done not only with gamma rays it was done with gravitational waves also the gravitational wave jetami dakalam due to neutron star marjorie the gravitational wave power gets it and that wave also kind of arrived in some ways there is no delay effect the space is classical. Kintu Judi gravitational wave kun delay jai. Ami tar duro to jani and everything jani. Tahale the space is not classical in some sense. It's discrete. Hoto bhenge gache. Mach kane je. And it has a lot of um, implications for quantum gravity. You can a quantum loop to to heno to to ishop to amar bishana. But the point point is that there's implications for it. So far, it has not been uh, seen. Again, going back to uh, these uh, high energy particle, high energy theory, st by standard model theory, of all the forces, gravity force is the weakest, right? So, the gravity might be leaking into another dimension, the force. Because it is uh, 10 to the power 39 times. Uh, weaker than electromagnetic force. 
So again, there were there were some uh, kind of they, some research was done, and I've seen a couple of papers on it that the gravity is not leaking anywhere. Whatever that neutron star merger or black hole stuff merger, the energy that is being produced, we are seeing it. energy amra dekchi. Energy So those are kind of what I can say is that uh, you know we were excited, but then it turns out it, it didn't pan out. Sir, on a good sir. I'm like a push for a PC inbox, it uh Jamaica Lick say, Yamnot Sir Dani Jamno Nicolas synthesis ticket, supernova uh explosion of Pore Amra high heavy element pi. So after the Helen Sir the uh the Newton struck polite pro, I'm a heavy element uh duto element and now of the bullet. So I'm the PC with the gold Amra Pi, it actually a cohort again. Supernova poly na duta Newton star polite. Right. That's um, it's a good question. Actually, um, I may suggest um, science magazine. There is a Mendeleever um, periodic chart. Chart here, um, was it? Um, I'm trying to remember, it was 150 years but I, of the Mendeleev periodic chart. So, what they have done, they have done a very nice job. Protiti element periodic chart in Mote, or a Likhadi is a Koto person, Kothati Garstapare. So it could be made in uh, inside giant stars. It could be, some of them could be made in the atmosphere of it. And then, of course, this neutron star merger comes in. We don't know yet. It acted So going back to, let me go back to the giant star business. So you have these O type and A type stars, which are really big stars and they don't survive for long, maybe maximum 100 million years. Amade Shurjo Jekane, 4.5 billion years, then 4,500 million years. Uh, they are 100 million years, and that is gone. So once the nucleosynthesis starts to happening, you're putting, combining helium to make carbon, and then, then making silicon, making aluminum. You're putting these helium bricks into this nucleosynthesis. Once you come to iron, uh, you're, uh, you can't do this anymore. Basically, it's not energetically efficient process. So the all these stars have an iron ball at the center, and once and then you have these onion layers around Piaget, Koshar, Moto, silicon, aluminum, etc. So the what's happening with the gold and platinum, which is kind of a higher elements, right? There is a thing process called came by S process or R process, slow process or rapid process. Or that we atmosphere mode before it goes into supernova. If you have to put neutron into this thing, okay? So uh, basically if you put, remember the neutron then decays with the beta decay, neutron becomes proton and electron and then anti-neutrino. So if you have a nucleus and if you put a neutron in there, neutron transfers in through beta decay into a proton, you jump into the periodic table to the next element, right? So the whole trick <laughs> is to this star have to put this neutron into the nucleus with high pressure and things like that. And there are, as I said, the slow process and upper rapid process. The rapid process, put these neutrons very quickly and then it decays and goes into the next one. So Kichu gold, possibly Hoyerokom. And then when the supernova explosion happened, or the entire star collapses onto this iron ball and squeezes the iron ball, all the protons and electrons combine to make neutron and neutrino. That's why the neutrino comes out and we have detected those neutrinos in supernova expression. And then the rest of the thing bounces off. And it, you know, shetty. So in a processor mode, you get a lot of heavy elements, including platinum and gold. But you see there is also lanthanide series, which is very difficult to make in this thing. And now we have seen the lanthanide Evidence in um, this neutron star merger. How many neutron? neutron star merger. They are saying I forget the numbers. That are saying that the Earth gold to do it. So, so possibly I, I forget the exact number, but they are talking about Earth shaman gold, Earth shaman platinum. So possibly some of these stuffs got distributed in our galaxy. And then it got mixed up with the hydrogen and helium gas, which made our sun and our planets. Uh, so it's possible that uh, some of the neutron star merger effect is here in our uh, in, on our Earth. It could be exciting, actually, 
বিভিন্ন জায়গায় দেশে কাজ করছে এখন যেরকম অবস্থা মানে আমরা আমরা জানি যে কোভিড সময়ে আমরা এই যে এখনো যে আমাদের আজকের অনুষ্ঠানটা হচ্ছে এই অনুষ্ঠানটা হয়তো হতো না যদি কোভিড না হতো এটা আমরা জানি মানে এরকম একটা ট্র্যাজিক ঘটনার পরও আমি আজকে যেটা বললাম গোয়িং ব্যাক টু ইট ইউ নো টকিং অ্যাবাউট ডিফারেন্ট প্রসেস অফ মেকিং লাইট এটা স্ট্যান্ডার্ড একটা কোর্স বলা হবে এটার মধ্যে কিছু ইলেকট্রোম্যাগনেটিক থিওরি রয়েছে ক্লাসিক্যাল ইলেকট্রোম্যাগনেটিজম পড়তে বা যেটা পিএইচডি লেভেলে পড়ানো হয় বা গ্র্যাজুয়েট লেভেলে মাস্টার্স লেভেলে পড়ানো হয় সেটা এর কিছু জিনিসের মধ্যে রয়েছে এই জিনিস উই ক্যান ডু দিস অ্যাট আমাদের আলাদাভাবে কোথাও যেতে হবে না উই নো দিস দিস ইজ পিওর ফিজিক্স উই ক্যান ডু দিস অ্যাট হোম এবং কিছু মানে আমি বলবো যে যদি অ্যাস্ট্রোফিজিক মানে সমস্যা ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু ডু ডেটা অ্যানালাইসিস অ্যান্ড থিওরি তার জন্য বিদেশ যেতে হবে না বিদেশ যাওয়ার জন্য যেটা হতে পারে যে when you make instrument that part is kind of a little bit difficult that when you make an instrument and you want to fly it তাহলে একটা ব্যাপারটা একটু ইয়ে রয়েছে কিন্তু আমি যদি ডেটা অ্যানালাইসিস করতে চাই বা পেপার লিখতে চাই ইউ ক্যান ডু এভরিথিং ইন বাংলাদেশ রাইট নাও কোথাও যেতে হবে না and the reason for it is that you have enough stuff online puro jinish if you want to work in hubble imaging processes you can do hubble imaging processes you don't need any degrees ami jodi motamoti buddhiman hoy ekta process kor amake college o jete hobe na amake university o jete hobe na i can take this software to give you the software the tool to work with hubble imaging. sloan digital sky survey sdss bishal library they have the entire universe is in your door if you know how to use this pro- software uh, basically it's a data analysis maybe oracle maybe something else but you can do this uh, you can write papers jeta samasya jeta hocche je kichu jaygay you have to know what has already been done so then you have to work with some you know person who has experience in it so she can ekta samasya shekhane theke jay but as far as i am bolbo je education if you are doing physics if you are doing electrical engineering those are the two things i always say that physics and electrical engineering this of course there is an applied physics amader deshe applied physics ta ekta boro jinish baire applied physics pole sadhanoto kono department thake na you know this already but uh, but so i would just say any type of physics and any type of electrical engineering will help you in doing this um, other engineering field becomes a little bit trickier মানে ইলেকট্রিক্যাল ইজ ভেরি ক্লোজ টু আমি আজকে যেটা বললাম এর সঙ্গে ইউ ক্যান ইউ ক্যান অ্যাসোসিয়েট উইথ ইট সো আমি যেটা বলবো যে দেশের যদি অ্যাস্ট্রোফিজিক্সের আলাদা প্রোগ্রাম নাও থাকে ইউ ক্যান ডু দিস স্টিল অন ইউর ওন ইউ ডু এ রেগুলার মাস্টার্স ইউ ডু এন এম ফিল উইচ ক্যান বি উইচ হ্যাজ এমফোসাইজ এ দিস স্টাফ ইউ ক্যান গেট এ ফরেন অ্যাডভাইজার ওর সামথিং লাইক দ্যাট এন্ড ইউ ক্যান গো উইথ দ্যাট এন্ড ইউ ক্যান স্টিল ডু অল অফ দিস স্টাফ ফ্রম হোম অনেক ধন্যবাদ স্যার স্যার ধরুন আমরা একটা লেকচার শুনলাম একটা গল্পের মতো আমাদেরকে স্যার মহাবিশ্ব ভ্রমণ করালেন অনেক বিষয় সম্পর্কে আমাদেরকে অবগত করলেন সো উই থিঙ্ক দ্যাট আওয়ার স্টুডেন্ট হ্যাভ বেনিফিটেড অ্যান্ড 
the main aim of our program actually is to motivate as you have already mentioned the in this corona pandemic situation amader sokol shikha protishthan bondho amra frustration e hoyto chole jacchhilam ba ekono achi jehetu amra directly interact korte parchi na shikha protishthaner shikshokder sathe chhatro chhatrider interaction onek guruttopurno notun gyan srishtite amra jani to shei jagate amra chesta kore jacchhi je amader student ebong poroborti generation e jara ashole goboshona korte chay अनुप्राणित गवेषणित रखते कथा खुब इम्पर्टेंटिफिक सबकिछ बहरे जा माध्यम उद्देश्य जो आसमें छात्र के अनुप्राणित करो कि हलो स्टूडेंट भिवार देर के अनुप्राणित करते भविष्य समय प्रथम तो आपके धन्यवाद अपनी जो प्रसेसा शुरू कर बेसर सवार मिलित एक सेमिनार सीज कर धन्यवाद डिपार्टमेंट इूनिवार्सिटी নতুন ইউনিভার্সিটি আপনাদের তাই না জি জি হ্যাঁ সেটা গুড লাক উইথ দ্যাট 12 বছর 12 বছর আছে হ্যাঁ দিস ইজ গুড আমি খালি একটা মানে যে জিনিস আমরা যেটা আমি হয়তো একটু জোর দি ওয়াজ দ্য এমফাসিস ইজ দ্যাট যে আমরা যখন একটা জিনিসকে ফিজিক্স বেসিক্যালি যেটা হচ্ছে যে যখন একটা জিনিস আমি না বুঝতে পারি আই হ্যাভ টু অলওয়েজ গো স্টেপ ব্যাক আর না গিয়ে আই হ্যাভ টু গো ব্যাক पीछन दिखे जावा देखा जो से आज के जिनफेसिस करते चाहिए जो ग्रामर एस्ट्रोनमी प्रथम ग्रामर एस्ट्रोनमी इज अन्य एस्ट्रोनम तुलन बोलते गोरिंग से अर्थे कारण क्यों इट गोज टू भेरि डिपर अंडारस्टैंडिंग पीछने से आई वैंड बैक टू दिस माल्टिंग विजनेस जे हमें जो एक जिन देखी तरह पीछे कार्यकरणगुल ভাবে জানতে পারি এবং ইটস নট মানে অল্প ইউ নয় এটা ভাই হ্যাভ দ্য কনক্রিট থিং ইটস অলমোস্ট লাইক আমি সব সময় এরকম বলি ছাত্রদের যে আমি when i am looking at around it i should be able to explain all the physical processes happening আলো আমার উপর পড়ছে আপনারা দেখতে পাচ্ছেন সেটা হ্যাঁ কিংবা আমার ঘরটা কি রকম গরম হচ্ছে এবং আমার শরীরের সাথে যে থার্মোডাইনামিক্স ঘরের যে তাপের যে আদান প্রদান হচ্ছে হ্যাঁ সেই জিনিসটা কিভাবে হচ্ছে সো ইউ হ্যাভ টু পুট ইয়ারসেলফ ইন দ্য ইউনিভার্স and then look at all the interactions happening with you with the universe and even a process guli physics actually does it it all check physics said ekta shokti that no matter what you can actually bring it down to this very simple thing to kaji amra jokhon boi ta porchi je patho pustak you actually go beyond it mane ami bolchi patho pustak theke shorli koron korte hobe go down below and then look at it and don't take everything for granted always ask questions thank you समय कमना